Hello everyone, I have an announcement to make in this video and then I'll talk about the MVVM architecture part of the project. The announcement is, you don't have to be a Patreon member to access this code anymore. The code is public, you'll find the link in the video description or the first comment of the video. The reason why I'm doing this is because I realize that it's difficult for people to follow the tutorial if they don't have access to the code. So I'm just going to make this public. And also there were a lot of students who were asking for the code and I just felt bad for keeping the code from them. So I just made this repository public and everyone can have access to it. I have, you know, created episode by episode folders in this repository. So if you want to go back to a particular episode, you can go back and refer to the code. Um, and people who have paid for this code, people who are Patreon members uh, to get the code. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. But you don't have to be members anymore. You don't have to keep your membership going on Patreon. You can cancel your membership because the code is free. But if you want to keep on supporting the channel, that's that's good with me, too. Uh, that doesn't mean that I'm going to stop um, working on this repository or stop making the tutorials. It means that I'm just going to just make this repository uh, repository open source. We we are not even halfway done in this project. We have so many things to cover. We have uh, external sign ins like Google, Twitter and Facebook sign ins to integrate into this product. And then we have like a lot of JavaScript and CSS tricks that we are going to do in place in chat. We'll also talk about progressive web applications. So there is a lot need to be done in this repository. So I'm not going to stop making tutorials or stop working on this repository. I'm just making this repository public. And like I said, you'll find the link of this uh, GitHub repo in the comment section or in the video description. Okay, having said that, in the last episode, I talked about, uh, uh, you know, profile view model. We, we talked, we followed MVVM architecture to update the data and get the data from the database. And in this episode, I was going to work on contacts page and the settings page to follow the same architecture. But instead of you seeing me just type and I'm not you know, talking that it would have been like difficult for me to explain what's going on. So I have already written the code. I have already followed MVVM architecture for these two projects and implemented the code. So we'll we'll walk through the code, but let's first see how these pages are working and then we'll jump into the code. OK. So just like I followed MVVM architecture for the profile page, I did the same thing for the contacts page and the settings page. Contacts page is pretty simple. We're just loading all the users from the database and showing on the screen. And on the settings page, I have um, two settings, uh, user preferences for the user, like if they want notifications or the dark theme uh, for that particular user. They're not functional, but I'm using MVVM architecture to save the data in the database. Uh, and that's how the flow is working. So let's jump into the code and see how this is implemented, how, this, how these two pages are implemented. So if I go to the code, you can see that I have um, on settings page, I have two checkboxes. One is notification, another is dark theme, and then I have a button which says save. And then on our initialize, I'm calling get profile from settings view model. Even the two checkboxes are bound to settings view models, notifications property and the dark theme property. And whenever I click on button save, it calls save method from the settings view model save. So uh, let's check where this view model is injected. For that, I'm going to go to my program.cs. Here you can see that settings view model is injected as HTTP client, uh, typed HTTP client, I should say. And then uh, if I look at the interface, if I look at the interface, you can see that there are two properties, notification and dark theme. And there are two methods, save and get profile. So if I look at the concrete implementation in program.cs, if I go to its concrete, class then you can see that i'm injecting http client it does have two properties and then i'm implementing get profile and save i'm implementing this interface and uh, in get profile i'm calling get profile and passing 10 the reason why i'm hard coding 10 is because for now we don't know which user is uh, logged in into the system this is something that we're going to talk about in the future episodes we'll talk about 
or login screen or register screen and get the user id from the local storage but for now i have just you know hard coded this value 10 which is this user is john smith so that's how i'm getting the profile if i go to my controller let's go to the web api call if i go to my controller get profile text user id and gets the user and sends it back to the client and that's what we are getting on our view model so if i open my settings view model again you can see that the user is um, getting returned and that's what we are assigning it to and the properties of it like if i go to um the operators we have implicit operators just like we had it for profile view model where we pass user and the user um uh, and it returns a settings view model and it's taking users notification and the dark theme properties and setting settings view models notification and dark theme properties so that's how the conversion is working just like profile view model and um yeah that's how um and uh, i have the save button where i am updating the theme and updating the notifications i'm passing again the value user id as 10 and we have dark theme and notifications uh, which are bound to this view model and that's what we are passing as parameters into web api so if i go to users controller i have two methods one is update theme and update notification it takes user id and the value and depending on which user id it is we are passing we are updating the dark theme and the notification depending on what value has been passed so that's how the settings page is working and contacts page is simpler than that if i go to contacts page uh, you can see that uh, I have contacts view model just like settings view model. I have contacts list of contacts and I'm looping through them. Um, I'm pulling the contacts on uninitialized where I'm saying get contacts. And just like we injected uh, settings view model, we're injecting I contacts view model. And if I go to the program.cs, you can see that it's added as HTTP client uh as typed http client and then if i go to its definition i'm implementing i contacts view model i have get contacts uh, and i'm getting all the contacts so if i go to user controller i have get contacts method which is getting all the users and that's what we are pulling that's what we are pulling here assigning it to users and then i'm adding users into my contacts and the reason why that could work is because i have this contact class is another class and i do have implicit operators where it takes user and then converts into contact and that's what is getting populated on my contact view model this would have been very difficult to like type and explain um so i you know coded everything and and i'm explaining everything but it i know it gets difficult for everyone to follow the tutorial so if you have any questions you can reach out to me you can get the uh code from the link in the video description it will be in the first comment of the video too go and star the github repo it helps uh, and like always if you have any questions you can reach out to me on twitter or facebook and don't forget to subscribe to the channel thanks for watching bye